already used is the population size at time t. So you sometime also called as a population size or density. And this is has a unit, right? And when you plot this t and xt this way, typically in growth literature, we call it as a size profile. So it is something like this with time t and you have the observations that you have taken. You have, it may be, it may be number of the insects, particular type insects that you have observed over the time. It may be number of, uh, it may be number of uh, tigers that every year you are uh, doing a survey and you are plotting over it. So when you have the size versus time, this is called as a typical growth size profile. Now this is another notation that is commonly used is the dx dt. So that means it is also called as absolute growth rate. So it is basically absolute changes. So it is there is a unit. So if I have this time point and this time point, two observations, the difference what we are getting, this is called as an absolute growth rate. So when you plot time versus this absolute growth rate, so we call it as a AGR profile or the absolute uh, growth rate profile. The other thing as we see that AGR, this absolute growth rate, that essentially means that it, there is a unit, uh, it is size or density that is associated with it. Now we make a that 1 by xt dxtt. This is called as a relative change in something. So it is, it is, it is easily understandable why it is making as a relative. So something growing from 100 to 105 and something growing from 1 to 6, in both the case, the absolute changes is 6 or absolute changes is 5. So something from 100 to 105 and something from 1 to 6. In both the cases, difference is going to be 5. However, we can easily understand here the rate seems to be like from 1 to 6. but from 100 to 105, the change is relative change is little, right? So that's why the 5 divided by 100, and this is something, and 5 divided by 1. So whereas in there only is a very small changes are happening, but whereas as a rate, it is a whole lot of changes happening. So that's why this per capita growth rate or relative growth rate, this is being considered as a very, very useful measure for understanding how the behavior or the status of the species in real life. When they are measuring, we usually model their per capita growth rate, or the, which is called as RGR. In growth literature, this T versus RT plot, this is basically called as a RGR or PGR profile. So this is precisely. So these are three things that we have got. So the first plot is T versus XT. Our second plot is T and this changes and our third plot is t versus 1 by x dx dt. Now definitely when you get that these are mathematically these are fine but when you collect the data then how basically these guys are represented. So that means these are only derivative. So we need a an empirical representation of this derivative right. So that is precisely what is done over here that when we receive some data say so at time points t1, t2, tn, and we have measurements x1, x2, xn, then, then we have two, two measures. One is absolute growth rate. So one measure is going to get y, x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1. So you see that this is the change. This is just nothing but the slope, right? This is precisely what you get. Then again, x3 minus x2 divided by t3 minus t2. So this is what is the measure of absolute growth rate. And what is the measure of relative growth rate? It is nothing but 1 by x1, x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1. That is the for at the first point. At the second point, it is going to be x2, x3 minus x2 divided by t3 minus t2. So this is at the second point. So given any population sizes, their measurements, these are the three quantities that size profile, absolute growth rate and relative growth rate. These three things are going to be a very, very important concept in the whole of this statistical inference on biological growth term models. Now, probably in the audience, there are many from the mathematical biology domain who are very, very well versed with the mathematical biology equations. 
but here we are trying to integrate those equations in the light of the data that how things whether what is the data is indicating to us so these are the plots that we can have so these three concept is the main primary concept so what is basically uh, growth models it's basically represented as a differential equation mostly so if in mathematical biology community they call it as a, if we have a non overlapping generation so there are two concepts one is a overlapping generation and one is a non overlapping generation so i think i to say i said the reverse if we have a non overlapping generation then you consider discrete difference equation if we consider a population which is an overlapping generation in that case we consider typically consider as a differential equation so which basically models the rate of growth or rate in changes in the population size as a function of t so this is the most general form it can have so it has a time component it has a size component also and these are the parameters which are usually the unknown quantities usually estimated from data so this is the estimation its estimation leads to the whole lot of uncertainty that's why this inference is needed so sir as i wrote here explicitly the such differential equation describe the rate of change in the population size so these growth models are basically usually developed for modeling the growth of population under certain assumptions so this is usually by the domain experts who incorporate the biological hypothesis so as a statistician or mathematician we tend to come up with very highly non linear models or or depends that what is the problem context but every modeling must must be come up with certain kind of what is the underlying uh, questions in the bio, or what is the biological hypothesis they are considering so suppose that if we consider that assume that the per capita population growth rate is a linearly decreasing function of time that basically gives rise to logistic growth equation so if your per capita growth rate x dx dt if this is equal to r a constant then it gives us exponential model we all know that if our per capita growth rate dx dt that gives is a linear function in the population size then a decreasing then we get the logistic similarly different different forms are considered and accordingly the equation comes so as i already told our first example always in any mathematical biology setup starts with an exponential growth model where population rate in change in population size is directly proportional to the existing population size so people also postulated as this proportional to x that whatever my existing population the rate of change is going to be proportional to that and this is something which is called as initial condition that you start the population to grow what is the initial size that you have considered in first lecture or second lecture probably these things are already been covered and as we observe that if your r quantity is positive then it is an exponential function the limit is going to be infinity so and we all know that for an exponential growth curve the population size goes to infinity as t tends to infinity right so that's that's perfectly correct but when r is bigger than 0 when r is less than 0 when r is less than 0 the population is going to be the population is going to die out right and when r is equal to 0 then population is remain constant so mathematical biologists they can easily understand that when there is a change in the parameter there is a drastic changes in the dynamics is happening we call it as a the bifurcation is happening so if you just think of i'm just connecting the dots what you have already learned then we'll get into the statistical uh, or the or the estimation and the fitting of differential equation so if you just consider r over here if your r value is over here in this case i have goes to infinity and in this case population size goes to 0 
and here population size remains a constant k so there is a drastic change in the population uh, in the dynamics is happening so at r is equal to 0 a bifurcation is happening so this is another very very like whole lot of research articles is based on the logistic growth equation it is that exponential growth definitely is not at all we observed in real it is not possible so there is a limiting uh, factor is coming up so that is precisely what is called as a logistic growth equation so as you observe that there are this term is coming from exponential and there is some additional terms get multiplied there are multi different motivations to grow it but the impact of this basically is making the population size not to grow unboundedly so there is a wonderful discussion in mark cot a very very simpler way the discussion is there that what is the role of k how k actually uh, plays an important role so r is the intrinsic growth rate x is population size and x is the initial population size k is the carrying capacity so the fact that which we have already studied in this course that the equation has two equilibria zero and k so how do we get an equilibria dx dt is equal to zero if i just consider the two solutions i get x into r y k is equal to zero if i solve it i get two equal two solution x equal to zero and k and you have studied the linear stability analysis by which you have shown that that x equal to zero and x equal to k so zero is an unstable equilibrium and k is a stable equilibrium the idea is very simple that you start with any population size it eventually converts to the the quantity k which is called as a carrying capacity of the environment this quantity another growth equation is is very very important and very very popular in the literature in the mathematical biology literature i think in, in india whole lot of people are working on that in fact some part partial part of my thesis also related to this so here i think one x is missing over here one x will be there so this particular equation as this particular equation is came from uh, from i think around 1931 wcle who has actually proposed it first so what they are saying that that there is some threshold value below which the population goes to extinction the idea is very simple that if the population would grow only if if there is a mating happening if the population is in a very sparse region and they don't mate in that case these guys this population should lead to extinction so this is something what is called, called as a uh, ali threshold so below this certain thresholds the population goes this. so just as an idea if we think that that if i write it down in this fashion 1 by x dx dt is equal to r x by a minus 1 into 1 minus x by k if we just plot it if we plot it over x and here we have 1 by x dx dt so as we see that it has two roots right at x equal to a and x equal to k and the graph would look something like this right so as we observe that when the population size falls below here when x is here then we have a negative growth rate negative growth rate means leads to extinction and whereas we are above it means we are in a safe position so we are going to survive so if the initial population size below a then population goes to extinction and if the initial size is above a then the population stabilizes at k in a long term so this is a solution structure which is given over here and all the codes also i am going to share with you and show also here so this is a simulation of the model using using r by solving this differential equation so as we saw that this is the time axis and this is a population size if we start from some population above k the all these trajectories are going to settle at the carrying capacity k whereas if we start from any population which is below a this guy is going to they are eventually going to extinct the population size is eventually going to extinct in note this is 
most of the analysis in, in the context of mathematical biology, several is they consider in a deterministic setting. However, when we are dealing with real data, that is very much, very much subject to uncertainty. So in that case, so in a stochastic setting, so this for the mathematical biologist, so in a, in a stochastic or a probabilistic setting, how one can indicate whether the population will go to extinction. So that is also very interesting literature is there because determinist setting is for classroom purposes is fine, but whenever we are dealing with real data, we basically deal with, dealing with the uncertainty. So they are the concepts that population viability analysis, estimation of this minimum quantity A, these are these are very, very important, uh, important concepts. And, and, and needs to be and needs to be considered. So just as if there are some concept stationary and quasi stationary distribution. And how this guy is related to logistic and LA growth equation, that's a very, 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 very interesting concept. So this is for reference of further study. So this is something uh, which is which is very very important when in particular when we are dealing with the real data sets. So we observe that there is a another vast and vast literature of uh, what is called as a of the biological growth equations. There are several bifurcations are happening in terms of how the how the research area is moving. So basically, the journey starts with an exponential model, what we call as a, this Malthus law. Then comes to this logistic, right? Then there are several other equations are being proposed, and there are model one, there are model two, and lot of lot of model five like this. I would probably say model one thousand, and, and throughout this plus probably close to 250 years, there are several, several models has comes into play. In this line of thought, so if we want to talk about something about real life, and we are just extremely populated with a whole lot of models, I have a box and it just models, models and everything. It's very difficult as a practitioner, right? So as a mathematician, we want to be a practitioner also. We just uh, don't want to do some maths, right? So here, so a very, very wonderful effort, which was made by Robert Bunk in 1994. He wrote a book on the growth and diffusion phenomena. That's the name of the book. There he has tried to connect several models with certain way. So say, for example, if you, by now we understood this is an exponential growth model. It graphs look like this. Now suppose that the intrinsic growth rate that decays exponentially as the population size grows over time. So this R, Robert Bank is saying that don't consider R to be a constant because at each at every time at every population size, it's not necessarily that R will remain a constant. Because when there will be a whole lot of competition, there will be decrease in R. So depending on the situation, then R can change over time. So if we assume that this is a parameter which changes continuously with time in this fashion. So that means if I have t, if I have rt, there is some r0, and after that it is e to the power minus alpha to the it, it decreases. So what is our equation comes now? That dx dt is equal to r0 e to the power minus alpha t and x. As a mathematician, you all know, if we apply separation of variables, that will lead to with a, this is the solution. Now, if you take a limit of this, it turns out to be this. That is something interesting. That 
this was an unbounded growth however if your parameter changes with certain possible following uh, some rules in that case you have come up with a bounded growth so as t tends to infinity it converges to some fixed points it does not goes to unbounded scenarios so you have something like this so there is a transition from here to here so there is a different different connections he has made and try to connect several several growth equations into a into a unified framework and several many many equations got connected with each other right so is that is that clear so i'll just share a reference also that what kind of connection we have utilized this connection to perform a innovative statistical inference for biological growth curve models that paper also i'm going to share but i think this is the problem that how this detection of parameter variation can be done this is our recent a recent work a new inference method that we have proposed which reduces the number of model fitting exercises very 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 significantly so this is a kind of what is the overall view that i wanted to give that starting from an exponential model then these developments are going on and there is the integration of real data is going on as i as we say that this is our recent 2022 paper and there are a couple of other papers also recently came so my point is this is a very very active area of research this first 15 20 minutes i took this time to convince that this is a very active area of research and when we have a lot of lot of math bio equations are there whole lot of it. we have a five dimensional six dimensional eight dimensional equations are there there is a huge need of data science and statistical methodologies to develop here integration work because it turns to with whole lot of whole lot of uncertainty because we have lot of lot of uh, very heavily parameterized equation that's actually a nightmare for when we have a very limited data setting so that is why this particular domain mathematical biology now received a heavy heavy uh, load of attention from data science and statisticians professionals so and wonderful predictions on epidemiological models and these dynamic these things are happening and definitely growth equations is the fundamental so it, the inference about growth equations means we are talking about the most bio, most fundamental unit of the mathematical biology is the growth equations so these are equations popular in modeling one dimension population dynamics blood flow and several several uh, how the disease progresses so several population variability assessment whole lot of other applications are there what i plan to cover in this workshop is basically the how we can solve differential equations using r a small introduction of r will be there and how we can perform a regression using r so particularly i will concentrate on this but given the audience without telling this we cannot go there so it is not an option so we'll just very briefly and we'll see some examples in r and we'll also see what are the scope for uh, future research that also i will try to explain you all so some of the emphasize uh, what my observation at least since when i did phd and after that uh, when i'm interacting with the uh, various mathematical people from mathematical biology background like including uh, including my very close collaborators so we have been uh, heavily using actually in this domain this matlab for numerical integrator or performing and i think for mathematical biology od45 in matlab that's very very powerful and very very commonly used so in this workshop or this platform i would also like to take this opportunity to discuss little bit about how are a free open source software because you need to buy you need to have money so matlab is extraordinary but if we don't have money it is difficult to get it right 
are comes up with a wonderful potential to do several several tasks. Uh, so let, we'll also, we'll, I'll also try to convince you all that that we have a have a good exposure with a good exposure in R we can we can do a good research in mathematical biology. Let us see how things go. So as per our agenda, so first thing we will talk about how we can solve a differential equation using R. Then we will talk about linear equation using R. Then non-linear equations, and then we will put the things here. We will be talking about little bit of simulation because this is a very very fundamental unit for statistical doing statistical inference. My expectation would be here. Please interrupt me at any time because it's only one and a half hours. I'll after post this lecture immediately a heavy almost a 40 and 30 page module will be shared with you. Several things which over time I have documented, written so that people can understand and and we can we can do these things. So that will be shared with you. Uh, so here it is almost impossible to cover everything, but that is written in the form of a book format. So I think you will enjoy that part. Okay, so materials and everything will be there with you. So in the meantime, here in any sorts of questions that you are getting, please please don't hesitate to ask. It will be learning for me as well. So I'll also face the questions and accordingly I can modify uh, those documents. So first thing, let us just talk about that how we can solve a differential equation using R. So let me open the open R. So you all are uh, comfortable with uh, with uh, my now. So because it, here I can make I can make you all comfortable in online mode. But just to give an introduction, this is the platform that you are looking at called as R Studio. You go to the internet and just say download. If you want to go step by step, download R, and then next step, download R Studio. If you have not done it yet or for later practice then just install R and install R Studio. Just follow this sequence. Everything is absolutely, absolutely fine. There is nothing new is needed. So this is the platform which provides. So as you can see that this is a kind of a MATLAB kind of view. It is there. So you can change the view also. This is the place where we write our programs. And this is the place where basically uh, the execution happens, the output we can see. And here we have history, whatever things we retain and everything is there. And here basically the plot window has come up. So you can customize this also just by going to the tools and uh, global options. So there are appearance, so you can change the appearance also. You can change the pain layout, layout also, like which region you, you want what. So everything. You can change the colors and other things. Many, many things you can do. It is a, it's a super, uh, it's a very, very wonderful uh, and very easily one can manage this uh, platform. Right? So let us try to understand our first problem. And I'll explain one by one. So only one example I am doing here. Only one example I am doing here. Rest of the examples are given in the in the document that which I am going to share. So the first example is so if I look at that exponential growth model, let me just show it the equation once again. This is the exponential growth. Model. As you say that dx dt is equal to rx, and it is the initial population size. So what are the things we need? We need this quantity r. We need the time window in which we want to solve this equation and we need the initial population size. So these three things we need as an input. So if we see that this state x is equal to 10. So this is the declaration. This is the way we write it. So that says that it is an initial condition. So that means initial population size. Then parameters that r is the parameter here, you can specify that r is equal to 0 0.3, that is something what you are considering, right? And we also need this time, so these three inputs we need, right? 
right so these are the three inputs that we need and as you can observe that this sign is used for putting a comment on this then we need the package what is called as a de solve package so what you can do you can go to package over here if you click it go install and you write here as you see that whenever you are typing something automatically the list is coming so there from there so you don't have a chance to make a mistake so de solve enter just click install so it is already installed in my pc so i'm not installing it this is how you install it so de solve is a is a very wonderful package used for numerical solution of the differential equations so this is the library is the command by which you can load the de solve package in your current environment then as we said that if you want to solve this equation it needs to three input one is the time that in the interval you want to solve the equation then state you have the initial population size and then you have the param which are the parameters that fix so i am now defining the function which will be passed in the de solve so let us call this function exponential exp fun so i'm just writing this given this as a name this is the syntax for defining the function for differential equation so this is not going to change if you give your differential equation this format will remain same so what is that that you need to have a as dot list please note that this is a syntax specific to r only so we are not doing any innovation here and what is the equation dx dt is equal to rx so we are writing only dx is equal to rx so t part we are missing and what is the return it is going to return a c of dx it is going to give us a list of change in the values so this is the syntax for it please note that this syntax is not going to change much if we have a logistic let us just see that how this syntax will change now the question comes let us execute it first so this is the if you see if you are here line number 6 click on the run button it got executed so here in the console you can see so here also in the history it has appeared then you execute the next next line that run so parameters so as you see that here it got executed so this execute means it is nicely it is done then you define the times let us understand this little bit we'll there is a new function we can see sequence is a function inbuilt function in r so if you want to know something about any function just write down help seq and you execute it you don't have to go to the internet here itself it will come is that what is the work of the sequence with certain examples are also given So what basically we have done, we have discretized the interval zero to ten with a interval length of zero point zero one. That's precisely what we have done. So if I execute this line, and if you just print first few of the values, say so one is to ten, the first ten values it will show as you can see that this is basically first few discretized points in the interval zero to ten. So this part is done. So we, our three input is ready. Then we have B solve package again running. So this got executed. Then we are executing the at the function that the exponential growth function that we have written. So OD is the function inside the D solve package. So there is a way to understand it. If you write down D solve. write down od can you see that d solve double colon so within the package what are the functions available it will show you as you see that there are many 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 possible functions are there od dot 2d od 1d od 3d there are several several possibilities there it's a very very powerful uh, tool actually as you see that od 45 method is also inside adams rk4 od 23 there are a lot of lot of options it's a very very rich package but for our purpose we have a simple scenario that we have an ode function available inside this is the function that we are going to use
So what if there's an input y is the state variable? That means what is the input that he has given? Times we will take the times that in the inter which interval I want is basically the discretization. What is the inter inside function? Which body we want to solve? That the exponential function. Then additionally it has takes parameters also. What is the parameter that we are passing? Right. So let us execute this. So it got executed. If you take a head of out, that means it will print first few. As you see that we started with 10, initial size 10, so 10 is the first one. Next is 10 point this, like this. At each time point, at each discretized point, it has considered, it has solved the differential equation and numerically and find out the evolution over time. So if you just write down out full, then you see that we get an evolution. Immediately, we want to plot it. So, if we just next we have the next code, we have plot made a plot of this. Again, you come here and execute. So, this is the plot that we have got. So, x axis you have time here, the evolution of population size, right? This is what it is, right? So, these components main means solid exponential model. You see that in the top, you got something. X lab means what is the level you want for X lab. And Y lab means what is the level you go for Y level. Similarly, there can be color also you can change, you can give names also, color I want, blue color. So again, you execute this. So this is the blue color that got uh, generated, right? So you can play with this code now and make your own graphics and everything, right? So what is the PGR profile or the per capita growth rate profile in this case. What is basically the per capita growth rate profile here? As we know that per capita growth rate profile for an exponential growth is a constant. So 1 by x dx is nothing but it is a constant. So we can plot, we are just plotting a curve of this. So this is the PGR profile, population size and per capita growth rate is a constant. At each population size, it has the same growth rate, which is R0.3, what you consider. How do the absolute growth rate, how it changes with respect to size? Means we have to plot dx dt versus x. It's basically going to give a line to you. This is the absolute growth rate profile. Right? And so I'm making another plot. So this is a population size profile. So these are basically three different profile for this. So how, what we can do actually, we can make a plot all of them together. So par MF row C1, 3 is the comment, is the code that stands for this. To execute this, let me make a little bit bigger. So I have the first curve. So this is the PGR profile. I have the second graph, PGR profile. I have the third graph is the exponential growth profile. So in the same window, we can have PGR profile, AGR profile, and size profile. So this is the basically anatomy of the exponential growth equation. So we can have a, all these plots. So this comment is actually, it requires a little bit of attention in my opinion. So if you make it, so one by three means I have only one row, three columns. If I make it two by three, so let us see what the pictures come up, right? As you see that there are, Right. Again, you execute these things. So in a single window, you can have six plots together. So that's how you can create beautiful plots uh, using uh, beautiful plots using R. So I hope that this part is clear that how we can solve the differential equations. Now let me show you that this is the demo that I have explained to you. Now rest of the thing you will need to do it. And actually, I have done it already. So in this equation, if I just change Rx, if you want to do it for a logistic, what is the change you need to make? Just 1 minus x, y, k. And there are corresponding changes in the parameters and other things you have to do. So this is the base frame that I have shown over here and explained every component. So if you have any queries in this, any component, please, please don't hesitate to ask me. Now let me show that what I am going to share with you. So this is basically which I have uh, made for, 
for this particular workshop the introduction to biological growth curve models using r so these are all the contents here so we have in the first one we have decided so if you just click over here you see the small description of the exponential growth model will be there it will it will take you till some of the anatomy it will tell you and this is the code as you can see which will be there which i just explained with you so if you just copy and paste in your window this thing will be done then you can do this plot here the plot will appear and then you have the pgr profile then you have the agr profile all these plots you can you can do then we have the logistic growth model again i put that equations so just thought of putting in the formal manner so in the same way this is the only change that you have to make and then parameters one more additional parameter will come k is equal to 50 and initial condition rest everything is absolutely absolutely fine so the code is will be there a small description of the growth equation will be there then the code will be there and the corresponding output the solutions are going to be printed over here the, the corresponding pictures will come right so here also you are going to have pgr profile which is a linearly decreasing function of population size here also you are going to have a agr profile absolute growth rate so this picture is important i just want to explain it a little bit most of the book in mathematical biology you see that if some equilibrium point which is unstable and something which is stable here i just indicated that that this is the point which is unstable by red and blue one is the uh, the green one i have is it is a what is called it is a uh, like stable one which is k0 point and this is the 0,0 point so it is agr profile i think uh, i think uh, professor malay sir must have uh, shown some of the graphs that there is an arrow from here to this side when he explained about the linear stability analysis i had a i wish i could uh, attend his lecture but yesterday we had it is so much so much we, long things actually here so i could not uh, attend yesterday when you the sessions here i have tried to explain some of the little bit of idea that how we we get it another explanation we have said that that when we say stable means nearby trajectories will converge there so here we have solved the same logistic growth equation this is the equation what you have so this is the equation what we have when we go yes this is the this is the same thing that we are doing it for different different population size that here we have solved only once if we want to solve it for multiple initial conditions that does not mean that we are going to write this code again and again and again right so we have these are the different initial population size that we have considered over here the same code again comes and we are going to write a loop for it so this code is again going to share with you so you see that this is the plot like the like the, the quality kind of plot you see in different books that it is no way lesser than that so you can get see that wherever you start it is eventually all the solutions going to converge in the carrying capacity k so similarly we have given example for gomperz equation also and some of the notes i have put over there and some of the related literature also where uh, we can uh, we can do we can we can do some of the latest uh, research in the growth curve models and infer and some of the results from our research group itself so you can have a look at that similarly for gomperz also the same thing right so this is for gomperz and this is another equation i have added which is the further generalization of the logistic growth equation which appeared in uh, 1973 in particular ecological modeling or in particular in the context of uh, rk selections and this type of theories this etologistic model has been a very very uh, has a very good explanatory power in explaining many of those consider some of the very good articles are there on r selected species k selected species which are being explained by this model i have given you a reference also that you will be uh, you can understand it so again see that 
what i want to show you that this format does not change only the internal function change so if you have your own growth equation you have some other differential equations and one dimensional equation you can easily easily solve it you just have to take the same code and and do that so here also if you see that there are for different different choice of theta we have drawn the different solution trajectories so these are the different this is also another uh, plot which as you are going to have these are for different theta values so how the pgr profile looks like for different theta and again how the agr profile look like for different different theta so theta seems to be kind of a measure of asymmetry because we all know that if the logistic population the maximum of this agr graph goes at k by 2 so we all know that those who has done some anatomy on logistic growth equation so that means the function is x into 1 minus x by k and so basically x into k minus x and if you take a maximum of it it maximum is achieved that exactly at k by 2 so theta when theta is basically measure of asymmetry it deviates the uh, it breaks the symmetry of the agi of the agr profile so some for theta less than one it will be maximum somewhere else for theta greater than one it will be maximum somewhere else very very important quantity so then i have put some of the of the research idea that where actually ecologists are utilizing this model and interacting this model with the species life history itself so these are the some of the nodes it is a very 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 important model and one of the very very powerful model then another example we have seen allee growth equations so here also i have tried to put some of the discussions i'll add the explicit references and this is again the solution you have to give a k and different initial population size the graph that i have shown you already this is the graph that you are going to get so these are again some of the very publication quality uh, graphs you will get so just to add one thing because uh, like if you think that uh, r is free software probably not that much powerful then i would probably add that till now whatever work that we have done you know, ranging from method development ranging from in the work of mathematical biology solving high dimensional differentiation i have every time used r only completely so till now i'm just using r only so this is the profile which i have shown you already and similarly this is the agr profile this is another plot which i wanted to show this is the graph i think typically in book you see that uh, this arrow indicate means it is an unstable and you start with near a population it is going to converge to zero so this is a stable equilibria this is a k the another stable equilibria this is a typical scenario what is called as a bistability that you have a threshold below which one equilibria becomes stable and in there is another region where the other equilibria is stable right so if you start a population size from here it will be attracted to zero if you start a population size over here it is going to be attracted towards the carrying capacity k so these are some of the graphs you see many mathematical biology books people draw it so in r very very effectively you can do all these things so let us go back to our agenda so what we have seen that solving differential equation using r that is something is done and what is the material will follow to you that is also a little bit discussion i have put i have tried my best whatever the for maximum possible justification i could do uh, since it is a fundamentals of uh, mathematical biology i am assuming that a significant proportion of the audience would probably in future look forward to work in the field of mathematical biology and a, a good proportion of the people who would already have an experience in this field uh, so it would be a kind of a for one group of people what are the potential research area they could explore in future and mainly for mathematical biology so what kind of uh, statistical ideas that needs to be incorporated in the mathematical biology that could also be covered that's how i i thought about designing it then we are going into non linear regression using r so let us again see with an example so let us just get into our the concept linear regression 
So why I am just taking suddenly, I will just plan for typing, is that idea, some of the things is in R, it is very, 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 very easy to just catch up. So without any any trouble, you can you can do that. So for example, if I just consider T is equal to 1 is to 10. So you print T. So that means it will give you the 1 to 10. Suppose that you want to create some artificial data. Say X is equal to, say it's following something, say 2 T square plus you can give some R norm. I'll just explain everything. We have very short time. So length of T and mean is equal to 0 and is is equal to say 6. Let us just see what is happening. So you can print x also and you plot plot t comma x is equal to 19 call is equal to ray and you can have some little bit cx is equal to 1.5 maybe. Let's see what is the plot coming. So this is the plot. What we have done here, we just simulated, randomly simulated some number. What is the graph? 2t square is the graph, actual graph. What we have done? We have done some kind of deviation in this graph. If we increase the sd equal to 10, as we see that this is going to be, see, more deviation is happening. If I make it to 20, till 20, See that this is the graph that we are slight division is there. If I increase is this equal to say 40, as you see that division is happening. So it is that the way that I have a growth profile, the deterministic equation, which is here size profile, which is governed by this equation 2t square. We added a random noise to it, and the random noise is given by the normal distributed random variables whose mean is 0 and standard deviation is 40. If you standard increase further, you see that it will be much, much variation will be. So more variation it has come. Okay. This is what is the equation that we observe. Okay. So this is how, now suppose that we want to go for it. Now the question is that this part you will not be having. So as uh, Sujata Madam asked that, how to perform a simulation, this is one of the most basic techniques that how we can simulate data from a model itself. There are multiple stochastic assumptions are there, but this is the most simplest assumption that at each t value, x is normally distributed. So basically we have performed, this is the plot that we have got. Now suppose that this is the data I am having. So rest of the part is we never ever know. See, we know it because we simulated over here. Now suppose that, suppose that I am just taking it from 0 to 10 only and as we go to 10. So this is the data that I am having and I am going to make a plot of this. Now suppose that given the data, one may thought of let me go for a linear regression. So this is how you perform ln y tilde x tilde t and a b line feet call is equal to red some other color I can give b. This is basically the linear regression line that you have put it. So what it has done? It basically you have the values x1, x2, xn and you have the values t1, t2, tn is just considered the sum of squares for the linear regression and it just fit at the line. As you observe that, here there seems to be more deviation. So it seems that it is not able to capture this part or, or this is the part, right? So you may guess that linear regression probably is not a good idea. So you thought of going into a non-linear model, right? Suppose that you thought of fitting this data with a model of this form. Let me just write it down over here. Suppose that you thought that AX I am going to model A into T to the power B, where A and B are parameters. So that means these guys are needs to be estimated from the data. When we perform a fitting of this 
linear regression model, if you write down the summary of it, you get a summary of this. So as you see that this is going to be the slope, it is going to cut the y-axis at minus 49.70 and slope of this line is 23.8383. Right? This is what is the graph it is giving. Rest everything I tried to analyze it in the document itself. So uh, they are a simple explanation, you will be finding it. Right? But you thought that for going for a non-linear model. Okay. So we thought that you are going to model say so fit one is equal to it is a it is done using the function called NLS. It stands for non-linear least squares. You have to give a formula means x tilde a star t to the power b. This is what you have thought. Let us go for a, this model and you have to give the data. What is the data? Data is this. This is the data. You have to give the data and in addition to that you also have to give it some optimization is going to happen. So you have to put in initial values of the starting and optimization. So A is equal to say I am giving say 2 and 1.1 and maybe B is equal to 1. So what we are doing actually here, we are doing nothing. We are just optimizing this Xi minus A Ti raised to B. I is equal to 1 to 10. There are 10 values. It's square and we are minimizing it with respect to A and B. So at which value of A and B this will be minimum we are finding it. So let us execute this. Yes. If I see a summary of it, this is the summary that estimate of A turns out to be 1.38 this and the estimate of B is 2.1991. Right? Now if you want to add these whatever the estimates from this you get. So if you write down these fitted values, so I think fitted and this fit one, this is going to give you the, what are the values that you are getting from the model itself. So in the same graph, you can all add all these fitted values by using a single comment for line. Fitted values also probably would work. Fit one, you can give some other color, blue, you can, Give this a green line would be equal to two. Maybe you can give three. As you see that this second one is the model that the linear model that we have fitted. So there are two aspects, two things we have done. It is a linear regression, and this is non-linear regression. These are the two things we have performed and this is the fitting with the blue or red or sorry, green one is the non-linear regression model that A T to the power B format and this is the linear one which is A plus uh, B T format. So this is the one. So through two models actually we have fitted over here. One is X is equal to A plus B T. Another one is the a into t to the power b. So these two models. Now which one is going to perform better? I think one is graphically you can easily understand that which one is going to perform better. So this seems to cover the much of the part of the graph. So please note that when you introduce with the data science ideas over here then automatically cross validation, prediction, and LO, CV, these ideas, train, paste, all these ideas automatically come. So this is not a workshop based on that. So that, however, this is a fitting when you have the data, you can do perform this and easily you can say that which one is better. Uh, just to which one is better, uh, which gives you the sum of square is minimum. So you can calculate the residuals for both the fitting both the feet. So these are the residuals. You can take a square of them. You can take a sum of the squares of them. Right? And you can, right? And then you can divide it by the uh, 
you can divide it because you can take an average also of them. So you can calculate a mean also of this. This is for the first model. And what is for the second model? You see that the first one, that means the linear one, has a mean squared error is 396, whereas the second one, the mean squared error is 62. So we have so this curve getting much, much, much closer to the actual data point. So what we learned, we learned that two models, how can we perform a linear regression model in R? How can we perform a non-linear regression model using R? And how can you compare two models in R? That also we have learned over here, right? And what is the comparison measure? we can use the mean squared error in this aspect. Okay. There are other concepts also, which is called as a archaic information criteria. So AIC, right? So there are the, the, the function is also there, who is also going to give you AIC value, AIC of bit one. So a model with the minimum AIC is usually preferred. So it's detailed discussion. I have given a reference in the material which I'm going to share with you. That there are very wonderful discussions are there in what situation you may need to consider EIC, in what scenario you may need to consider a BIC, in what situation you may need to consider the root mean squared error that is going to do the uh, nice job for you. So these are again the references. So basically, a lot of references and approaches. What possibly the way, what is the current methodology, that discussion, uh, you will find there in the document which we are going to share. So this is again, uh, the way I have written over here, as you can see that uh, if you just get some ex experience on this, it is very, 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 very easy to, easy to follow. It is not at all, at all difficult. You can just write down live, uh, do live coding on this, so no problem at all. So let me go to the document at the next part of this fitting of the growth equation real data. So till now I, we saw it from a mathematical biology point of view, the role of mathematician. We have an equation how we can solve using a real using a using the software. So we're basically solving the differential equation. Now we are incorporating uncertainty into it that we have got a data how we can do perform that fitting. Then a small description of the nonlinear equation is there. So this is an example which is going to have a fitting from an exponential model. So as you observe that, so the query that right now we had that can we have some kind of a simulation? This is one of the most basic example of simulation. What we have done? I choose the initial point. I choose a parameter r then I know this is the solution of exponential. I just added some noise to it. So this will give you a simulated population size. And then I just storing it into a data format. And I'm plotting it. Then I'm adding a legend, legend to it. Right? And I'm adding the exact solution, the mean function to it. And then I'm fitting this exponential model, a0 to the power rt under the NLS. And you see there is a list as a starting icon. These are the things. For all the growth equations, whatever you are going to have, not necessarily you will have only these four equations. There are heavy, heavy, whole lot of growth equations are there in the literature. But this format is not going to change. So how the summary would look like? This is also here and fitted values. This is the graph it is going to generate. I deliberately put this true one because here you know from where the data simulation has been done. And based on this data, this is the estimated one that what R has performed for you. So this is the process that we artificially simulated the data. We then fitted the equation to the data and try to see whether R is doing a good job or not. And so that we can compare. If you collect the real data, this comparison we cannot make. Because what is the happening, what is the true model in the real data, we never know. Because that God has played that game, right? Unless God gives us the model, we will never be able to capture 
what is the true model in the real life scenario. So that is why this simulation, I did it in this fashion to convince you that we have simulated data from an exponential model and we have performed a nonlinear least square of the same model on the data and we see that it is doing a good job. The same thing you are going to for also for the logistic model, simulation and fitting back. So this is the red one is the true one and this is the estimated model. This I will not talk about it. I will share a material that you will be able to see that how to perform inference on the nonlinear functions. The theta logistic growth equation, then again the another same thing. I perform the simulation and fitting it back. Similarly, for Gompa's model, also perform simulation and this back. Right? Right. So we saw some one of the examples in R also. Now the important thing this part when we are dealing with nonlinear models okay, it is a whole lot of uh, like and we are trying to interact with the real data and a lot of lot of uncertainty gets associated with it just to show you a just to show you a simulated picture this also i'm going to share with you Just to let me show you just simulated picture. This is what is the picture. So when we collect the data, this is a simulation I did. Right. So this is a simulation work we have done over here. So if you have, if you see that in a logistic growth, if R is say for example 0 0.3, and you see that that uh, that the uh, converges to the carrying capacity, it is much later because R represents the intrinsic growth rate. So that means uh, population take more time to stabilize at the carrying capacity. Whereas as R increases 1.5, here we see that this stabilizes much, much faster. So, so I simulated one, one series from each of the scenarios. So this is something what we are getting. Now here you see that not much deviation is actually coming. So this is one scenario. There are four different scenarios of R being considered over here. So when you get the real data, so one of the R will be there and it will also be subject to uncertainty. That the estimate you are going to have, they are going to be subject to uncertainty. So whenever we are performing a statistical inference for growth curve models or any statistical model using the real data, we always, always need to provide the standard error of the estimate that we are getting. When, at least with my teaching experience, I found it to be pretty difficult to explain it. So let me just take a little bit, uh, just one minute to explain you. When as a mathematician, I first time looked at this issue, I actually did not realize how much complexity we are dealing with. You have this real data over here, this real life. And then as a mathematician, I came up with a model. Say model. Say I'm just I'm say I'm writing this. Say dx dt is equal to f x t. We do not know, no idea that what real data, because real data is the process probably God is having. He is maintaining that, and we just have an observation. There may be error in observation also. So this is, we considered that this is an assumption. So that means here, one level of approximation is happening. We don't even know whether this is the true or not. So we are assuming it. So already one level of approximation we are doing. Then we are collecting the data. And let me just use it samples beta for the parameter. We are using the data. So we are calibrating this model and we are getting an approximating model. So we are calling it f hat xt beta k. So we get a, this is an approximating model. So there is another approximation going on. Then 
if we want to talk about population characteristics say for example at what time or at what size population receives the maximum growth rate for population is going to decline population going to extinct so those guys are again some pair of function of this you no know, parameter vectors of this so this beta cap this is already an uncertainty there so this is another function of this so that means one more level of uncertainty is there every time we may not be able to compute its exact distribution explicitly so this is again going to be that phi cap and beta cap so one more level of approximation comes so that means if we analyze the real data and trying to talk about population characteristic 1 2 3 4 5 five stages of approximations actually we are doing yes now two of the students are working on how to quantify these uncertainties when i first time actually interacted with this as a, we are having a very purely mathematics background so first time we are inter interacting with the real data what i realized that for a very long time i did not have actually the essence of this understanding itself that we are dealing with a whole lot of uncertainty that uncertainty is getting propagated into multiple multiple stages so after that we thought of whatever the analysis we are doing this assumption here at least we probably need to have multiple models in the in, in the plate so that is what is a very very popular in the mathematical biology community the very very popular research area which is called as a multi model inference you can you can see one of our research recent work uh, on this that we successfully applied multi model inference in certain variable selection problem and it, i think it's appeared one of the very very uh, top journal in this domain so whenever we are we tend to consider some mathematical model which is the ultimate one and we we this parameter changes will lead to that all this conclusion we make but however we are solving some real life problem so we are actually equipped with whole lot of uncertainty so our inference should be in such a way that the experimenter or the field person facing as much as lesser risk so whatever the maximum possibility from our side needs to be done it has to be and that's why this stat data statistics data science as math bio that must be must be integrated in any of the curriculum so that's what we have done in our course in in ict research so this are being you now integrated math math bio itself is integrated with the uh, data science and uh, statistics ideas so one of the very very important way, i think i'm just running out of time one of the very very important way that how we can capture the uncertainty associated with or compute the standard error associated with the parameter estimates how to do that this is what is called as a yes this is what is known as a bootstrapping so here i have directly provided the codes itself so this will tell you that this is the plot which i want to show you so when we fitted the logistic growth equation three parameters to be estimated right three parameters to be estimated what is that what are them r x0 population size and r and k so these are the three parameters to be estimated so as you see that these are the so x0 k and r these are the three parameters to be estimated now bootstrapping is a process by which we simulate the observation simulate the data from the same data set what we are having and performing the regression on the revised data on the new data that we have got which is a sample of the original data itself and perform this several times and gives get a uncertainty estimate associated with x0 that means this is the what is the possible range this guy can vary similarly for k what is the possible range this guy can vary 
right as you see that the k varies between some 17 to some 20 and similarly where r varies it varies between 0 0.5 to something 0 0.1 this is the answer and it also explores what is the whether there is any kind of correlations between there between the estimates or not so as you see that this type of uh, picture means there is a good correlation is happening there is interdependency between these two parameters so this is a very 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 important concept i think i will not be able to cover this we have a new speaker as well so but in the in the method in the in the documents i have explicitly provided the complete code that how this is being done an example for logistic growth equation being provided this picture will support i explained this picture and a little bit of understanding how the sample function work that also i have done so a note on the nls function is also done that what are the options that is useful for perform growth curve modeling inference using r and then i have also provided an example how to perform a real data analysis for that so these codes are there so as you see that the rest of the codes are not going to change anything only you will just need to add the data from the external source this data I'll provide you, right? So rest of the analysis, everything, everything, fitting, everything is going to be same only. So here, basically, what I did, we have taken a real data, and we have fitted four different models: so exponential model, then logistic model. You see that the code does not change, and then the then the Gompers model, and this is the final picture you can see. This is the figure you will be able to generate. The four different models are there. Real data is there, the black one. And which one is the best model? Based on the AIC and MSC, you can see that which one is the best model that you can identify. Yes, let me.